Hello, welcome. My name is David Diggles. I'm the senior pastor here at Soul Church. We are so glad to have you. And my name is Marla Diggles. So stands for Strangers, Orphans, and Widows. And our primary ministry is outside these four walls. So you're right where you need to be. I pray that you enjoy your worship experience. Now we come to our foundation scripture, which is taken from Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 29. And it reads, And the Levite. Because he hath no part. No inheritance with thee. And the stranger. And the fatherless. And the widow. Which are within thy gates. Shall come. And shall eat. And be satisfied. That the Lord thy God may bless thee. And all the work. Of thine hand. Which thou doest. And our vision statement. To see people. Of all race and color. To see thee get life. By offering them a way through Christ Jesus. In our church model. A church designed to impact. 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 Because the Lord is my shepherd, I have everything that I need. He lets me rest in a meadow's grass. And he leads me beside the quiet stream. He restores my failing health. And he helps me do what honors him the most. That's why I'm saved. That's why I'm saved. That's why I'm saved. I'm saved in his arms. Because the Lord is my shepherd, yes. See, I have every little thing that I need. He lets me rest in the meadow's grassy, y'all. And he leads me beside the choir stream, and he, he restores our failing health. And he helps us do what honors him the most, y'all. That's why we're safe. I feel so safe. That's why I'm safe, I'm safe in his arms. See, when the storms of life are raging and the billows of the rock. See, I'm so glad, I'm so glad that he hides me. Oh, when the storms of life are raging, y'all's gonna hide me, y'all's gonna hide me. He, oh, yes. See, y'all don't understand that God is our rock and he forms a cleft within. He lets us hide. He lets us hide. He lets us hide. Yeah. I'm safe here. His arm. Hallelujah. Let's just go to God in prayer. Father, we thank you for this moment in time. 
for the time that we'll spend with your people today. God, we know that you have a plan for our lives and that this time and this season was ordained by you. And so, God, we say thank you. Lord, even in things we don't understand, we say thank you. You are our God, and we know that you have a great plan for our lives. You know the plan that you have. We may not know, but God, we trust you. We trust you. We trust you, Lord. And we'll be careful, very careful, to give you praise and to give you thanks in everything. We say thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're so glad that you're joining us today. I've said it before, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, we're grateful that you're here. We know that you have choices. We know that there's a lot of things that you could be doing right at this moment, but we're grateful that you've taken the time to spend time with us. Welcome. I just have a few announcements for you all, just to keep you up to date. Every morning, every single morning, Monday through Sunday, all week long, we have prayer first thing in the morning, and we'd love for you to join us for prayer in the morning at 7 a.m. and for prayer at noon on Zoom, and also Bible study every Wednesday night on Zoom. Our Zoom ID is 793-600-0274, and the password is 3100. Don't go all week. Pastor said it before, and I thought it was really funny when he said it. If you only fed your kids once a week, CPS would come and get you. You have to feed your spirit more than once a week. We're glad that you're here at this moment, but we want to see you again on the prayer line. We want to see you again at Bible study. So please make sure to dial in on Zoom to join us for prayer and Bible study this week. Also, I have something super exciting for our children. So many church will be on Zoom from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. on Saturdays. And we have a little study guide for our kids. Here's your children's Bible journal. You can stop by the church and pick up your children's Bible journal. I imagine if you give a call and you say, hey, pastor, I'm not able to get by the church to pick up my Bible journal, but my kids want their journal. I want to work with my kids on Bible scriptures and work with my kids on Bible puzzles. We'll send you one in the mail if you give us a call. We want your children to have their children's Bible journal. Again, 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. on Zoom for our so many church. Well, we're excited to hear from our pastor, Pastor David Diggles. I'm thankful that he has prepared a word for us today. We know the Lord is going to speak to us. And so come on up, Pastor Diggles. Let's hear the word. Bless you. Thank you so much, my, my dear wife. Thank you for those words and for the announcements and just thank you for your love. We're grateful to have you. And just so welcome to all of you today. Just thank you for joining us to be a part of this service. Uh, you could have been elsewhere. And so we're so grateful that you chose to worship with us. And we're thankful today. And so I just give God all the glory and praise. I am excited about the word. I am excited about uh, this time of year. It's a special time for me. And I'm just so grateful uh, for my relationship, for my family. I'm just thankful for what God is doing in our lives, and uh, I just want to just dive into this message. Again, I told you last week that uh, I'm doing something different this year that I, that I haven't done uh, in the last 10 years, uh, is do a relationship series in the month of November. Uh, this year is like no other year, and so, so I'm doing something totally different, and so I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. 
Uh, last Sunday, I started a series. Uh, it's called Roommates or Soulmates. And uh, I'm so grateful to, to start this series last week and to share. Uh, it, is, it is a serious, serious uh, time for us to talk about that. And so, in other words, I said something like trouble in paradise. Trouble in paradise. And so I want to pick up from that last week and, 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 and start uh, this week's message and just really talk about an issue. I want to really, really pinpoint uh, just an issue. And so let's go. Let's go. Let's, let's, let's go. I'm excited. And so um, I want to pray and then I'll go right into the word. Uh, Father, we bless you today. Thank you again for another day that you spared our lives and for health and strength. We thank you for who you are today. Uh, you are such a good, good father. We love you. Thank you for another opportunity to uh, share your word, Father. I pray for every person under the sound of my voice that they will hear the word and open their minds, open their hearts to receive it, Father. I thank you that it will not return void. It will do exactly what you sent it to do. Bless everyone today. And I thank you and I give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. You've heard it a million times before, uh, but it bears repeating today. And so I want to say this. Even the strongest relationships face challenges. Even the strongest relationships face challenges. Building a blissful, uh, healthy relationship takes work. Work. It takes work, absolutely. And it's not always easy. I want you to know that today. It's not always easy. Uh, especially when there are issues, especially when there are issues. Issues are a part of life. Hear me when I say that everything will not be all peachy and creamy. I'll need you to know that issues are a part of life and a part of being in a relationship. And so I need you to hear me today that you got to know that it is a part of it. And so today I want to talk about an issue that is part of relationships. It happens. And so I want to go to the Word of God and, 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 and really take my time to talk to you about this. The Word of God is incredible, y'all. Listen, the Word of God is, 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 is amazing. It is sharper. It is powerful than any two-headed sword. It is always applicable uh, to where we are in today. Uh, and so th there's one issue I want to talk about today, and I believe it will bless you. I really do. I really believe that it will bless you. And so today I want to talk about dealing with betrayal. Whew, yes. Mm -hmm. Take a seat. Sit down somewhere right now, please, so you can hear this message. Dealing with betrayal, the issue of betrayal, breach of trust. Mm. Yes, the issue of betrayal, breach of trust. Uh, God is so good, y'all. I want you to know that. He's made it possible for you to be right where you are. <laughs> yes, right where you are and receive a powerful word that will convict you. Not only convict you, but restore you all at the same time. And so my prayer is that this message begins uh, to, to really touch your life today. I believe that healing can take place. I believe that the process can take place today. Uh, I'm so grateful. You don't have to be embarrassed. You can be where you are. You don't have to look to your neighbor. You, ain't, you don't have to look across the room and see who's looking at you or, or worry about this or that. You get to sit right where you are and listen to this word and allow God to speak to your life. And so I'm so grateful, even for a time like this, that you can be right where you are and allow God to move in your life. And so you don't have to worry about people looking at you sideways or, or looking at you funny. You get to hear and apply this word uh, moving forward with great expectations. Uh, somebody ought to tell God, thank you. I know you don't, uh, nobody's looking at you. Just tell God, thank you right where you are. Let's go to the word. I'm excited. Let's go to the word of God. Go with me, if you would, to the book of Ephesians, uh, the fourth chapter. 
in verse 2. We're going to read, we're going to jump around a few verses today, uh, but let's go to Ephesians, the fourth chapter, and verse 2. Let's read that together. Uh, it says, always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. I'll say that again. Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. All right. And so I'm going to jump around to Proverbs. We're just going to read a few verses today. Proverbs, the 15th chapter, uh, verse 1. Write this down if you would. Also, uh, you can go back and watch it as well. And so Proverbs 15 and 1 says, a gentle, a gentle answer deflects anger, but harsh words make tempers flare. A gentle answer deflects anger, but, but harsh words make tempers flare. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. All right. Y'all right. Y'all, y'all. This is the word of God. Again, it is powerful, sharper than any two-headed sword. And so go to Proverbs 19, 11. Let's flip over just a little bit. I want to show you something. Proverbs 19, 11, it says, sensible people control their temper. They earn respect by overlooking wrongs. Sensible people control their temple, their temper. They earn respect by overlooking wrongs. All right, yes. And one more verse we want to look at, Colossians 3, uh, verse 13 is where I want to go. I wanted you to see that verse as well. And so once you look at that, then we're going to dive into this message. I want you to see something. Colossians 3, in verse 13 says, Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord himself forgave you. So you must forgive others. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. We can see that the word of God tells us through these verses how to act towards others, to, to reap healthy, happy strong relationships. I, I, I can feel somebody sitting there saying, Pastor, you got to know that I'm the one who has been betrayed. I'm the one who has uh, been offended. And so I want you to know today that God knows what's happening in your life. I want you to know that God cares about you and he knows what's going on in your life. And so uh, we are to look past each other's faults be slow to anger, and be loving, gentle, and humble toward others. Uh, these qualities and actions that God has set before us in his word work to build people up and to positively influence others to want to change and become better people. These are the same qualities in actions that God has and shows toward us, which is why when we die to our old self and become born again into the family of Christ, we strive to become better people and strive to be like Christ. The thing is, the hardest thing is to, to strive to be better, to strive to be like Christ, but yet come up short, yet to betray somebody, to do something, to hurt someone. How do I move forward after I have betrayed my spouse? How after I have been betrayed by my spouse? And so whether you're dealing with the fallout from a betrayal or you have betrayed someone, I want to talk about that today. I want to talk about breach of trust. Anytime trust is broken, there's going to be a rift in the relationship. 
It might be painful to face. I know it is. I know it is. But, but leaving these issues unaddressed won't help anyone in the long run. Uh, you can keep sweeping it under the rug and make it be a pile this high. But sooner or later, you're going to trip up because you have not dealt with the issue. I told you last week that you can be a better spouse or you can be a bitter spouse, but you can't be both. I'll say that again. You can be a better spouse or you can be a bitter spouse, but you can't be both. I am so glad that you stayed in this relationship. I know you've been wondering, why did you stay? Why did you allow this person to remain in your life? But I'm so grateful to God that you stayed in this relationship. Uh, the enemy tried to destroy you. He tried to, to kill you. He tried to, to steal your joy. What was meant for evil will work in your favor. Somebody ought to tell God, thank you. What was meant for evil will work in your favor. Uh, and so I want to tell you some things. Let me give you four points, and I want you to work at this. I want you to, if you're the one that has betrayed your spouse, betrayed your significant other, or if you have had a, a breach of trust in the relationship, I want you to work on this. I'm going to give you four things today that I believe that will bless you, that will bless you really good today. Go with me if you would. Let's take off right now. The first point that I want to make is what I want you to do is I want you to take full responsibility if you are at fault. I don't want you to blame your spouse. I don't want you to blame your significant other. I want you to take full responsibility if you are at fault. If there has been infidelity or trust has been broken, it's important to take full responsibility for what has happened and be understanding of how your behavior hurt your partner. Stop playing the blame game. Stop blaming your spouse for your infidelity. Stop blaming your spouse for your bad behavior. Stop pointing the finger at your spouse. You take full responsibility for your actions. I know some things may be generational curses, but I want you to take responsibility for your actions. Allow God to work in your life. Allow God to do some healing inside of you. Allow God to move in your life like never before. If you just be truthful with your own self, avoid becoming defensive. Stop being so defensive about something you did or sidestepping your mistake. But don't fall into self-loathing either. I don't want you to do that. You should own it in a loving way that creates the space to start to rebuild trust. In a nutshell, take responsibility, but don't attempt to justify your actions or, or blame them on someone or something else. Can I get a witness? Come on, somebody. That was the first point. Let's move on to the second point. The second thing I want you to do is I want you to give your partner the opportunity to win your trust back. This is uh, uh, if you are the one that has been betrayed, you the one that has uh, the, the trust has been broken. I want you to give your partner the opportunity to win your trust back. Somebody sitting there saying, no, no. I don't want to do that. I know what he's like. I know what she's like. No, I'm telling you, give them the opportunity to win your trust back. Because you stayed in the relationship, remember what I said, you can be a better spouse or a bitter spouse, but you can't be both. Give your partner the opportunity to win your trust back. While you have every right to feel hurt and, and angry, there should be a desire to work on the relationship. Trust can never be restored until the person whose trust was broken allows their partner a chance to earn it back. 
Instead of bottling up emotions, I encourage you to be radically transparent with each other about what has hurt them. And so this involves truly getting it all out there. Lay it all out on the line. Even if you feel a bit silly, even if you feel self-conscious admitting certain things, but lay it all out on the line. Lay it out there. Let them decide if they want to forgive you. Let them decide if they want to love you. Let them decide if they want to stay with you. But free yourself. Go ahead and say that I'm different. I'm changed. I, I don't want to uh, hold on to all of these feelings anymore. I'm ready to let go. If you're the one who broke the trust, this also involves being radically transparent with yourself about what mo motivated you to do so. Was it simply a lapse in judgment? Or was it an attempt to sabotage a situation you didn't know how to get out of. In order to be honest with, with each other, you have to start by being brutally honest with yourself. That's how you do that. You got to start with yourself. Look in the mirror and say, work on me. Deal with me. Let me address me. Let's go to number three, number three. And I'm almost finished, y'all. I just want to talk to you today. I know this is a tough series. This is a tough relationship series, but it is necessary. God knew we would be right here in this very moment. He knew that you were at the end of your rope. He knew that you were ready to throw in the towel. But today God said, no, you be still and know that I am Lord. I am God. You stay right where you are. Let's move on to number three. Number three says seek professional help. I want you to seek some help. Yes, I want you to get some help. I want you to get somebody involved in your life. Broken trust can take a toll on everybody in the relationship. It can take on every one of us in the relationship. If there's been a significant breach, consider working together with someone who specializes in relationships and can provide guidance and counseling and, uh, and guidance for healing. I said seek professional help. Don't you be calling uh, Ray Ray and Poo Poo and all of them people, getting them all in your business. Stop talking to Shanae. Shanae don't know nobody. She ain't never been married. They're not qualified to discuss these things. I need you to understand, get somebody in your life who, who, first of all, who loves God, who honors God. I want you to get somebody in your life that you trust, somebody that you can share some things with and know they're not going to hurt you, not going to use it against you. Go to somebody who you can trust. Get some professional help. This is very important. I know y'all want to be secretive and, 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 and get divorced all quietly, but no, that's not the best for God. That's not God's best for your life. You got to stop running. God is saying there are people who's here to help for you, for your life. Don't you get divorced. Don't you separate. Don't you move out that house. Stay right there and let God move in your life. Let God work in your relationship. Let God do it for you. He will do it. Let me move on and I'm done. Let me get to my last point. Number four. Number four is I want you to extend compassion and care to the person you hurt. Whew, this is a tough one. I want you to extend compassion and care to the person you hurt. If you hurt your partner, it's easy to fall into a spiral of shame and disappointment in yourself. I know what that's like. I know what it's like to disappoint my wife. It's easy to fall into a spiral of shame and disappointment in yourself. And I realize that that's not going to help either of us. It's not going to help either of you for you to fall into that space. Rather than spend all your time beating yourself up over what you did wrong, try shifting that energy. Try shifting your focus towards showing care and compassion to your partner. 
I need you to make sure that you put your priority a marriage. Put your marriage a priority. If you don't put your marriage, if you don't prioritize your marriage, who will prioritize it? You cannot keep putting your spouse on the back burner. You cannot keep saying, I'll get with you later. I'll spend time with you later. Now is the time that you begin to pour into your marriage, pour into your relationships. I know there's been betrayal. I know there's been a breach of trust, but I believe that it can be restored. I believe that it can be repaired. I believe that it can be healed. And I believe that God wants what's best for your marriage. Me and my wife went through a devastating period. I believe it has strengthened our marriage like never before. She is my best friend. I'm so grateful to God that she's in my life. I thank God that he's given me the opportunity to pour back into her. I, I told everybody in this, in, in this ministry, Friday nights belong to my wife. Every Friday night, I commit to make sure that we spend time together. I need to hear her. I need to see her. I need to make sure that she's okay. I need to check on her, see how her week was, see how things are going in her life. And I'm telling you, spend time with your spouse. Spend time with your significant other. Find out what's going on in their lives. Find out. Don't you let everything else be a priority. Take them with you if you got to go somewhere. Ask them to go with you. Ask them to spend some time with you. And that's how you begin to build that trust. Allow them to have access to your phone. Allow them to, to have the freedom. The freedom. The freedom. I did say the freedom to have full access to whatever you're involved with. And that's how you work to deal with the betrayal and the breach of trust. And so my prayer for you today is that you grab hold of this and just let this speak to you. It is not God's best that we get divorced. It is not God's best that we separate. It is not God's best that we are uh, uh, cheating on our spouse. It's not God's best. I want you to go back and read those scriptures. I want you to be gentle and humble and loving and work together. Let me pray for you right where you are. Let me pray for you. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you. I know it's tough. I know you, you, you're in a pickle right now. You don't really know what to do. But I want to pray for you right now. I want to pray that you get, that you get restored. I want to pray that you get renewed and refreshed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God has not abandoned you. He has not forgotten you. And I know you're in a spot right now and you just like I'm, I know you're hurting. Hey, God. Hallelujah. I know you're hurting. I know you're you're dealing with some pain. But let me pray for you. Right where you are, just close your eyes. If you're driving, keep them open. But right, if you're sitting somewhere, I want you to close your eyes and just say, Lord, here I am. I surrender my will to your will. Father, I open my mind, I open my heart to try again. Father, I know that you would never leave me nor forsake me. Father, I really don't want to give my spouse, my significant other, another chance. But, Father, I heard your word today. And, God, I trust you. I trust you completely. I trust you. And I know that you have a perfect plan for me. I know that you said you know you. You know the plans that you have for me. And it's not to harm me. And so, Father, I heard your word and I opened myself up. I need you to guide me. I need you to strengthen me like never before. Here I am. 
I empty my cup and I ask you, did you fill it up? I want to start again. I want to believe again. I want to try again. I don't know how to take a step, Lord. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to move. I don't know what to say, but I'm saying to you, Lord, I, I want to try again. I don't want to be miserable. I don't want to be frustrated. I don't want to be brokenhearted. And so here I am, Lord, and I ask that you would work on me, Lord. I know that you are moving my relationship like never before. I praise you right now. I give you glory right now, God. I thank you in advance for the move in my relationship. I believe that things will be different going forward. I trust you. And I thank you for sending such a powerful word in my life. I receive it, and I apply it right now. Forgive me today, Father, of my sins. Forgive me of my actions that was not pleasing to you. I thank you for your mercies are new every morning. Thank you for giving me beauty for my ashes. Thank you for joy for my morning. I love you, Lord, and I praise you, and I give you glory today. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, amen, amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I pray this message has really blessed someone today. I, I am just so grateful again for what God is doing. Let us, uh, uh, let us get ready to go into our uh, worship and our giving. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for that. Thank you so much. We're going to worship the Lord in our giving today. If there is someone that's there right now and you haven't accepted Christ, I need you to get connected to us. Uh, if you're struggling right now, I need you to contact me. I need you to get connected some kind of way. Don't you, don't you fight it. Don't you stress over it. Contact us. And I promise you I will reach back. I will reach out to you. You're not alone. God bless you. We love you. We love you. We love you. Let us get ready to worship in our giving today. Thank you for being a part of this service. Thank you so much. There's multiple platforms that you can give on. Uh, we have Tidely. We also have Cash App. You can give on that as well. And so you can do it either way, uh, whichever one you prefer. Uh, or you can come by the church, whatever is convenient for you. We're here. We're here. We appreciate you. Your giving has blessed us. And we thank you that we can do what we're doing today. Thank you so much that we can do this. We're grateful to God and grateful to you for your blessings. We love you and we thank God for you. What we do here is a restoration confession. And so we want you to join with us as we get ready to say our restoration confession. Uh, and it is something that we do consistently here. Uh, and so we do that. And, and so we want you to make sure that you say that with us. And so I'm going to locate it here on my, my device here, and then we'll say it together. And so if you guys will just hang in there with me, and then we're going to go forward together. It should come up on the screen. It says, according to the word of God, I declare that money coming to me for the sake of the gospel. I call myself debt free. I proclaim that I have the necessary funds to do everything that God has called me to do with abundance running over to bless the Levites and the strangers and the orphans and the widows which are within my gates. You are restoring me to my wealthy place. I call God's house and my house and all property paid in full. I receive raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and returns, discounts and dividends, checks in the mails, gifts and good surprises, bills decreased and paid off. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all my needs according to your riches and glory. Amen. 
Father, we bless you again today. Thank you for everyone who's giving, Any, everyone who's trying to give, who has a desire to give. Bless them that they may be able to give next time. We bless you. We thank you again for uh, continuing to make ways and open doors for it. God, we're so grateful. Uh, this is a time of thanksgiving. We give thanks today for every person. Uh, you give us the ability to get wealth, and we thank you today. We honor you in our offerings. We honor you in our tithes. We honor you. We give today from our heart. We love you. We lift you up. We give you praise and glory now. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. God bless you again. Thank you so much for worshiping with us today. We're getting ready to uh, close out of our service. And so, again, we thank you. Don't forget to get connected. Uh, subscribe and, and get uh, join us on Facebook and YouTube. We just love to have you. All right. Amen. God bless you again. Uh, my wife is coming now to cover us. Father God, we just thank you for such an awesome word that you have presented to us today. It's such a timely message in this season of the holidays, God. We know sometimes the, holiday, the holidays can bring about a stress times for relationships, especially for this pandemic. But we believe in, we thank you for your love and your mercy. Thank you for giving our pastors the word. It's such many nuggets, Lord, that we can take from this. But he brought out in the scriptures that we need to have a gentle spirit. We need to be humble. And, Lord, we need to be sensible people in this, in this season, learning how to control our temper and our anger, God. Lord, in betrayal, Lord, he helped us understand that we need to take fault if we are responsible for betrayal. And we need to extend um, uh, the cooperation to our, our partner, Lord, uh, as they uh, get... Uh, overcome the betrayal, Lord. We need to uh, give them time to win our trust back, God. We need to be able to get the professional help that we need, God. We need to not allow pride to overtake us, God. We need to uh, let you uh, start the process within us, God. And then, Lord, we just need to uh, not beat ourselves up when we have caused betrayal in our relationship. We know shame and disappointment won't help the relationship. So let us be humble, let us pursue you, let us allow you to forgive us, allow us to listen, understand, and trust you, Lord, and be transparent and open so our relationships can be mended. We thank you for such an awesome word, and even if our relationships are doing well, we thank you, Lord, for allowing this to use, be used as a disciple tool to help others whose relationships may be broken. And so, Lord, we just give you all the glory. We thank you for the this is the best day of our lives, and we give it all to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, our final word from our pastor. I pray that you enjoyed your worship experience today. I pray that you enjoyed today's service. This message, again, is very critical for this time. I want you to practice this week working on this message. Take these points and apply them to your life. 
I want this week to be productive and effective. God bless you.